Now after my father, Bruno, gives me a bit of training, it's time for the Pokemon League. 72 and 73, those episodes, they didn't happen, those are filler. But everything from that point up until the fourth round are pretty much accurate of what really happened. The only two differences are that the first is before the fourth round, Gary did not lose any battles. He was still in the Pokemon League. And the other is that, of course, when I was in the fourth round, as you recall, it wasn't Bulbasaur who did all the victories. It was actually Ivysaur, though he still lost to Bellsprout. And also, it's worth noting that during that rock field where Squirtle initially defeated that Nidorino, it was actually War Turtle who defeated him, of course. And, actually, this was what triggered his evolution. Yeah, he actually evolved into Blastoise right there. So now I have a Charizard and a Blastoise and an Ivysaur. So, I don't know why they lied about that stuff, but that's what really happened. I got my Blastoise at this point, and that's how it all went down. But after the events of the uh, fourth round, there was actually a small break that was taken during the... Uh, Pokemon League because now that all four of the fields have been gone through, the question is, what's next? Well, as you recall, they go for regular stadiums where no field stuff or any of that content going on. It's just a regular field, which of course took some time, so we all had a week break before we got to the set top 16 battles. Now, during this week, I befriended Richie, as you recall, and we became pretty good friends and all that stuff, but during the night before the week of return, the uh, tournament was to return, we found out two things. There's two things that happened. The first is that we found out that we would end up battling each other. And the other thing was during that night, I was actually challenged to a battle by a guy by the name of Tad, who tells me that he was the, the uh, runner-up last year's Pokemon League. Yeah, second place winner challenges me to a battle. He says, that the uh, league commissioners were talking about me and how I was doing pretty well, and he wanted to challenge me to see if I was as good as they say. So of course, I wanted to use my best Pokemon, which unfortunately at the moment was Charizard, because, you know, even though he won't obey me, he is the strongest of them. And so we end up battling, and, it's a po and he uses a Poliwrath. Now, you might be thinking, hey, this story sounds kind of similar to the one in Orange, where Char the Charizard chills episode, and that's because it is similar. This is the episode where Charizard obeys me, but it goes a little differently. Now, as you recall, the trainer's Poliwrath uses Ice Beam, freezes Charizard up, and seeing as this was late at night, thing of it is, is that the Pokemon Center was overbooked. They didn't have any room for Charizard to be healed. So this means that I had to heal Charizard on my own. And after this defeat where Charizard disobeyed me, Tad tells me that if I can't get Charizard to obey me, then I don't deserve to be the champion. So this makes me to realize that I need to get this Charizard to obey me, and at the moment, Charizard was frozen and would, was at risk. So, of course, I t spend the entire night trying to do nothing more than heal my Charizard up so that he doesn't die. Now, of course, it goes through up to the next day, and I'm still trying to heal Charizard, and as a result, the Pokemon League is getting ready to start back up, and Richie is there waiting, and League people say that if I don't show up in time, I could be disqualified. But I'm still he working on healing Charizard up, and luckily for me, I do manage to finally heal Charizard, and he's so grateful that I healed him and risked my own health for him spending all night just trying to warm him up, that he pretty much told me to get on his back and he flew me right over to the Pokemon League. Yeah, remember that Pikachu? Yeah, but anyways, upon getting in, I make it at the last minute and we managed to have our battle. Now, the battle with Richie went a little differently from what you may have been told. You see, as it you remember, Richie did indeed start by sending out Butterfree, but of course, I didn't use Squirtle because he's a Blastoise, and I, by sending out Blastoise, I actually end up winning against Butterfree, but after that victory, Richie ends up sending out his Pikachu next. Not this Pikachu, he gets used later, but anyways. Pikachu ends up defeating Blastoise due to the obvious type advantage. 
So uh, after this, I actually send out my own Pikachu to battle his Pikachu. And it ends up being a really intense battle. The two of them are almost neck to neck. Pikachu takes a huge amount of damage. But in the end, my Pikachu managed to defeat Richie's Pikachu. And giving me that victory, but with one Pokemon left. Now, you may have been told that the other Pokemon Richie used was Charmander. No, that is not true at all. In fact, Richie had a Charizard of his own, believe it or not. And that was what he sent out, who quickly took care of Pikachu, due to the fact that Pikachu is badly weakened. But, luckily, my final Pokemon is my own Charizard. Yeah, who would believe it? Both two of his, of his Pokemon were Pokemon- were, uh, same Pokemon versus one another battle. But, in the end, the two Charizards battle and my Charizard actually obeys me! And it was because he obeyed me that he finally managed to finish off Richie's Charizard with a big, bad seismic toss. Giving me the victory against Richie. So don't believe what they told you in the show. I actually won that battle, not Richie. Though we did still become, end up being friends. Now, after this, Tad was in the audience and he saw the whole battle. And after defeating Richie, he said, he congratulated me and said that I do in fact deserve to win after all, and we shook hands. So, that all ended up being all good, and Charizard finally obeys me. Now, after this, now you might remember that this was where I was said to have lost, when in fact I didn't, because now it was time to move on to the semi-final round. And who would but my opponent be? Well, remember back earlier on when I had that opponent who was a guy named AJ with that really strong Sandshrew? Yeah, it was him. He was my semi-final opponent. And his Pokémon have now become even stronger than ever, with a Sandslash as his final Pokémon. We had a big battle. And in the end, it was actually a battle of Ivysaur versus Sandslash. Ivysaur almost lost, but then at the last minute, he evolved into Venusaur. Yeah, I now have all three starters fully evolved, and it was because Venusaur was able to battle, he managed to take out that Sandslash with a big strong Solar Beam. Giving me the victory and moving on to the final rounds. Now, of course, you might be wondering, so who's my final opponent? Well, you're gonna like this. Believe it or not, the final opponent was Gary Oak. That's right. Remember how in the Johto League there was that final battle that we had? And remember how all of his Pokémon were Kanto Pokémon? And not one of them was from Johto? There's a good reason for that. It's because his team was actually supposed to battle me in Kanto. That's why all of his Pokémon were from there. He didn't even use his Umbreon. But nonetheless, point is is that his Pokémon were all, well, the ones that you saw in the Johto episode. Well, the big difference is that I had a slightly different team. Instead of the ones I had then, well, there were some similarities. I mean, yes, I did use Muck, Pikachu, and Charizard, who, of course, in this version, once again, did defeat Blastoise. All that stuff with Charizard's fights, those were all true. Or, prior to that, I had, instead of a Bayleaf, I used Venusaur, and, of course, I had Blastoise as well. And I also used Kingler and Tauros to help. So yeah, all of them managed to put up a huge fight, and in the end, it was Charizard who defeated Blastoise with his Seismic Toss, giving me the victory and becoming the Pokémon Champion. Now of course, you might be wondering, well, what happened after that? Well, after being congratulated, I noticed that one of the League Commissioners goes to Gary and asks him if he would like to take over as the Gym Leader to Viridian City, due to them not having one. Gary happily accepts and becomes the new gym leader, replacing Giovanni. Now, of course, Gary's story is over, but mine is not yet. Because now that I've defeated the Pokémon League, it's time for me to face the Elite Four. They tell me that in one month, I will be scheduled to battle each of them one at a time. No, it's none of that stuff where I have to battle all four of them at once, despite what some rumors might tell you. I get to battle them each separately. Where, the way it worked was actually that on, they're all located on the Orange Islands. They have a guy who I meet, this young artist named Tracy, who is actually there as my guide. He's there to help me out with basically taking me to each of these islands so I can battle them. And I get plenty of days in between each battle, so I get to heal up fully. None of that stuff about battling them all at once. Can you imagine that, how difficult that would be? 
But anyways, each instance I get to battle, I start off by battling Prima, who uses some really powerful ice types. Oh, and by the way, seeing as at this time I need someone with Surf, and I didn't really want to teach Blastoise, it's worth noting that prior to this, I actually did end up catching a Lapras that I befriended, and she ends up helping us out on the way, so she's the, our boat to the, each of the islands. And at this point, I go into the Elite Four with the following team. I'm using Pikachu, Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, Lapras, and of course, Snorlax. Oh, I guess I forgot to mention this completely, but before this even happened, when I return home, they have a huge celebration to celebrate my victory, just like the one in Palette Party Panic, with just small differences like Charizard obeying and all that. That all took place, and I did have to say goodbye to Pidgeotto, who became Pidgeot, but yeah, after that I get the Lapras and we ride to each of the islands. First opponent being Prima, with her powerful ice team, but luckily for me, Charizard and Venusaur managed to pull through and give me a, get a big victory. And of course, Pikachu is the one who finishes off her dugong. Now of course, my next opponent, a week later, ends up being my father, Bruno. Now this ends up being a really intense battle. It almost comes down to the neck and neck, but eventually, my team manages to pull through and we do manage to defeat Bruno. And he congratulates me, saying that I've officially surpassed my father. So hooray for me. Now of course the next opponent is one that Oak was a little nervous about. Not sure why he was so concerned about, but the opponent was Agatha, who insisted that apparently Professor Oak is a softy. But I managed to defeat him. Er, I managed to defeat Agatha and, come, and w earn her respect. And then her and Oak talk, and I don't know what happened between them after that, but whatever it was, it's none of my business. Now, of course, this leads to the final battle. Lance, the Dragon Master. Boy, that was a really tough battle, but... <sighs> Lapras really pulls through in this one, because it was Blastoise, Lapras, and Charizard that really did manage to win this one. Without them, I don't know what I'd do. Now, of course, having defeated Lance... I am now officially the strongest Pokemon trainer out there. No one out there can defeat me. Upon this victory, Misty actually runs up and kisses me. Yeah, we actually become a couple here. Happy Poke Shippers? Hope you are, cause yeah, that's how it really went down. The two of us are a couple. It's official, you can call it canon now. And after this happens, I have now been declared the champion. And at this point, I really am not able to be defeated. Now of course, there is one last story that has to take place, and that's dealing with the Mewtwo that escaped. Now, the movie kind of exaggerated it, but there is at least some truth. I do, in fact, go over to the Unknown Dungeon, where I battle Mewtwo, and I find I don't end up catching him, but I do end up defeating him. And I, after that, I have now realized that no Pokémon trainer or Pokémon can defeat me. Now, of course, it's clear that I have no one, nothing really to do at this point. I've already achieved my dream, so what happens next? Well, ho -Oh appears, and he is flying down towards what looks to be Mount Silver. So I realize that I have to go there to find him myself. After all, he always does seem to know what's best. And upon getting... so I decide to head out, but of course, before that, I tell Brock and Misty one thing. My instructions to them is very simple. I want them to go to Johto and find a trainer who will succeed me. Mentor him, guide him, and make sure that he becomes a strong trainer so that I can have a worthy challenge. And I think you all know what happens after that, don't you? Well, that's what really how the story ends, and that is the end of my story of becoming the champion.